will you please welcome Mr. Adam Murphy. So back when I won Fame Lab Ireland, I was a physicist like Jessamyn, but I actually left that and now I study science communication full time. And I left because I actually, I found out I have a condition. And that condition is being a desperate whore for attention. So I decided I need to become the best attention whore I could possibly be. So how do you best explain science to people? So I decided to look through the research. And the research is ridiculous. See, science communication is important. If you don't do it, you get people who think fluoride shouldn't be in the water supply. You get people who think that a drop of caffeine in a liter of water can cure sleeping problems. <laughs> but when you actually get to the research, you get to a problem. It starts back in, say, 1985. There was a report by the Royal Society which said that um, to know science is to love it. The reason the public don't know science and they don't love science is because they don't know it. All we have to do is teach them and we will therefore inspire them. But when you read this report, you get the feeling that the word these people wanted to use wasn't public or lay people. The word was peasant. <laughs> Maybe even unwashed peasants. <laughs> so you get this kind of, oh, well, uh, they, they, just, they just need to be taught. They're just ignorant, poor things. Were these people British? I don't know. Were they 17th century landowners? Almost certainly. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can already see a problem with this way of thinking, but, for example, I don't know much about cricket. I looked up the rules to cricket. Guess what I'd still rather set myself on fire than follow on a regular basis? <laughs> so, the 15 years after this report, people didn't love science anymore, and they didn't know any more science. So it failed on every possible count. So a new report came out. And this report was from the House of Lords. So we already know what kind of salt of the earth people we're dealing with in the House of Lords. Real, real common everyman kind of guys. And they, they put out a report that said, no, we don't, we don't need to teach. That's not the important thing. We need to engage. We need a discussion. We need it to come two ways. Scientists need to the public and the public need to talk to science. There are problems with that too, though, because, well, first of all, sometimes people don't want a discussion. Debates are tiring. I sometimes just want to put on YouTube and learn that sometimes slots come down from trees just to go to the bathroom, and that when they do, they do this little twerking poo dance. <laughs> and that evolutionary biology has no idea why they would do this to themselves. The other problem is easily illustrated. And we're going to do it now because we're going to have this debate. I'm going to ask uh, several people in the audience for how they're going to solve the nuclear crisis that's going on in the world. And how many of you have just clenched? <laughs> how many of you, you don't want me to come anywhere near you? That's because sometimes you don't want to be engaged with. And that's what current research is saying. Sometimes people want to be engaged with if they can, and sometimes they just want to sit back and watch the honey tones of David Attenborough flow over them. <laughs> That sounds really fucking obvious, but it's actually kind of rebellious thought in current science communication research. It's a new thing. Coming up with this in my thesis kind of makes me the James Dean of science communication research. <laughs> and to answer the question you all now have, yes, that is the saddest thing you've heard all day. <laughs> so to get to this, I looked through hundreds of YouTube videos of Facebook science posts and Twitter posts about science. And then the first thing, I just looked at what they did right. Did they use narratives? Did they use analogies? Were they funny? I even checked, like, what was the pace of their speaking? And then I realized I was there at 6 p.m. with a clicker, desperately counting how they were going, and I was going insane. I know that sounds really cushy, doesn't it? Looking through YouTube videos all day. But try looking through the 87th YouTube video for the 11th time when you didn't like it the first time around, looking for one specific quote, and all you'll be able to hear through your main is da, 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 da. But it actually got worse for a while because I was told that I didn't have to just look at how these communicators dealt with the public. I had to look at how the public responded. Which means I had to delve into the greatest cesspool of humanity. The thing that proves we are doomed as a species, 
The reason we know that animals are not capable of evil is because a platypus has never commented on YouTube. <laughs> and I know that because I would pay to watch a platypus comment on YouTube. That would be hilarious. But I had to go through literally thousands of YouTube comments to see how people responded. And it turns out they don't really engage with the science. They just want to they just want to know how the creator of the video is. They doing well? They still with that girl who was in that last video a while ago? Because this is the thing, people only want to be engaged with when they feel like it. When there was avenues for them to communicate, they took them. Otherwise, they didn't really bother because that's this is the new, the conclusion of my research, the current precipice of science communication research is that science doesn't need to teach, we don't need to we don't need to start dialogues, we don't need to educate the poor, desperate, unwashed masses. We actually just need to do that thing where you open your ears and actually pay attention. You have to read the room and you have to see if people either want to watch a video or learn that slots do funny dances occasionally. Thank you. Adam Murphy, everybody.